Shalom. I wanted to make a make a couple of remarks on this, and 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 this is still in the first father reasoning, but here we want to. Okay, here's one of the um, what they call the black black Madonna. This is one of the black Madonnas of Russia, and we're about to publish a new publication. Um, it's called the Legend of Our Lady um, Virgin, Our Lady um, Mary. The Perpetual Virgin and her mother Hannah, and we've been speaking to many of the sisters and reason of our the mother, the daughters, and the wives out there in Rastafari, and we give thanks for that. But yet the Holy Spirit says that um, the, the the woman have a vital role, and when we talk about the first father and Father's Day, right? And give you a little background that that was Richard Nixon, and it was in the time of Richard Nixon, and he was the last um, American president that Haile Selassie um, counseled. You understand? Know and we can see a couple of the presidents what happened to them. You understand? Um, um, Eisenhower's last last words um, basically was televised, but kept buried for like um, almost 40 years speaking about the military industrial complex and we know that his majesty is the one that tried to wake Eisenhower up because Eisenhower um president Eisenhower was um was a Christian man and he really was uh you could say a believer you understand in Christ on that sort of level and was highly impressed by his majesty and even admitted on the record that his majesty not being uh, like a college uh, first world so-called educated person uh, knew things that 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 he didn't know and 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 he was uh, almost ashamed to say so and, and that's a remarkable admission you understand that's beyond the race color creed all that that is just truth that's that's that was a righteous Gentile, Eisenhower, at least in his latter days. Um, Kennedy, too, tried to speak up, and, and 50 days after meeting His Majesty, he was assassinated. Um, and then we have Nixon, and Nixon, with Nixon, the, one of the last things he did was the Father's Day came into law in the 1970s. And we find that to be very interesting, connected with the events in Ethiopia during the 1970s. But this is a message on sisterhood. We wanted to give a brief message on um on the sisterhood and some upcoming um publications in particular even this book right here um um the book of Adam and Eve is also very important so if you don't have a copy of um the Ethiopic um um combat or conflict it's called Conflict um, of Adam and Eve, also Combat of Adam and Eve, or Adam against Satan. It's called the Gedala, or some pronounce it the Gadala. Adam is a very important text, and some of the brothers and sisters um, have ordered copies of it, even though we didn't go into it as we would like to. And it's a very important text because it gives us a lot of um, information. When you read the Bible, some things in the Bible, they don't go in much detail in the Bible because people were familiar with that. There were other scrolls. There were other documents. There were mystery school um, encodings of these parables like we see between Adam and Atum, so forth, and so on, even between Isis or Orset and, 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 and Eve on one level and Isis or Orset and, and, and Mariam. You understand? And our Ethiopic, we're speaking about Ethiopic Mary. So this is just a reminder to the Rastafari, um, the sisters, the sisters out there, the mothers, daughters, and wives, you understand, to try to get a study group or something like that amongst yourselves around some of these documents because as a male, it, just reading it, it just, it just, it just brings a whole new um, orientation. It, it brings a proper orientation vis-a-vis um, and not to be confused with the Roman Catholic white Mary kind of uh, ramblings. A lot of that is is just don't don't confuse what we are publishing in the legend of our Lady Mary, the Perpetual Virgin, and her mother Hannah, because we already recognize that the whole template of Adam and Eve is that they both fall, fell short. Eve was what deceived, like they're trying to deceive the black woman today like they're trying to deceive our 
Rastafari sisters, mothers, daughters, and wives. And some ones who have come to Rastafari, because you find a lot of folks that say, I used to be Rasta, and so forth and so on, and then find out if they're doing something better. You know, something took them out the way. And part of it is because we didn't have, you have to recognize how the word and the teaching. See, the connection with the growth in faith is the teaching. This is why they separate the, the brotherhood into one category of priests and one category of ignoramuses or lay people or really illiterate. You know, a lay person was one who was not literate. You understand, one who could not read. They had to rely on the priest. So the priest became a group. And it was going back to Old Testament. That's how the Christian church, in a sense, went back to Old Testament in many of their um, ecclesiastical orders, right, in many of their ecclesiastical orders. Now, as Majesty tried to reform um, these aberrations even in the Ethiopic church, and this is why we have so many of these publications available to us right now. We was touching on the Fitta Neges is one particular document, um, and even a lot of these Ethiopian, Ethiopic scrolls, and, and more overall, more than anything, the Metzhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, or the Bible of His Imperial Majesty. Now, that's in an Amharic, and there's a little more study and growth in the Bob Bates, the House of Reading, the Amharic Bible homeschooling, and some of the other materials and, and, and programs that we all have to work together to establish and disseminate and, and take our personal responsibility. Like, I would ask, do you know your Fidels yet? You know what I'm saying? Your Hahus yet? It's very important because these are the cookie cutter keys that we need. You know what I'm saying? Something that is above and beyond the Babylonians. Though so there are some intellectuals that are, you know, that are quite erudite and they are knowledgeable. But many of those Europeans who have learned the truth, the real truth concerning Ethiopia, they have become such staunch supporters of Ethiopia like the Pankhurst and the rest of them. So, see, that's why the truth, the God of truth, and the truth is, you know, the truth is the light. It's because of so much ignorance. So, the ministry is, is to disseminate our ancient Ethiopian cultures, mainly among our brothers and sisters or the members. But also, you know what I'm saying, to speak truth to power and to testify before kings and rulers and peoples and governments. That's like UN, that's global work. But the churchical is the foundation. Because mm -hmm. see what happens, some folks, they get out there, in the world of the cult, the Illuminati, and the UN, and then they start seeing some demons and powers work against them, and they never had no faith or weak faith, and they can't cast out no demons. They can't confront these globalists who are using occult power because they don't have the spiritual power, because they deny Christ, to whom all power in heaven and earth is given. See, all power is given to Yeshua HaMoshia, but in order for us to tap into that, you understand, know we have to turn to the Father in the name of Jesus Christos. You know what I'm saying? So thus, once again, you know what I'm saying, the importance of this particular order right here, of the fatherhood of God, you know what I'm saying, to usher in and teaching and in practice the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Now, ones will say, what about the sisters? What about the sisters? I think on a certain level, we probably put too much responsibility on the sisters on a certain level. I, I really would say that. And maybe because of their nature, being mothers, they take on or are able or because of circumstances do take on more. Now, I mean, that doesn't excuse personal, you know, responsibility. You know, we're speaking generally here based on the Rastafari, sisters, mothers, daughters, and wives. That's why we put out the message to the sons, a brief message to the sons, the you know, and on brotherhood and on the, fa the whole fatherhood message on the Father's Day kind of message is really at the heart is about that because remember the first Adam right and the second Adam now what about the second Eve some say that Kedistim Gudamarium she is the second Eve now of course there's a template or there's a connection to ancient Egypt people say well it's Isis Isis is not Eve come, come on it is Eve Right? Eve is the one in the old. Isis is, Isis is the template, the encoding in ancient Egypt because Awo, Aw, means true and Sait means woman. So it's the true woman, the example of the true woman, the true template of woman. Her, her story 
as we have it in the verbal hieroglyphs is a parable. Moses was learned in that, and thus we have our Hebraic school of thought in the Torah and in the Bible. A further clarification we have in our Ethiopic documents because Egypt was a colony of Ethiopia. So we embrace both of that because remember it says that the people, they should do what? They should be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation. You understand? You know, and of Egypt, their glory. This is why we can point to Egypt. But we, we should not go after Gentile whitewash misrepresentation, misinterpretation, and, and these white pale eyes like Hawass. You understand? Uh, we just call them Khanas. That means serpent. You know what I'm saying? This, that, that, that Egyptologist. I'm surprised y'all not doing more stuff on that dude. Mubarak is gone. He need to be gone too. But that's another message aside. This message is for the sisters once again, and we don't have the book. The book hasn't come back just yet, but we're looking forward to doing a little vid once we get the actual book. You understand um, the legend of, we call it the Ethiopic legend of Our Lady Mariam. You understand? Our Lady Mary and, and the perpetual virgin. Even understanding what does it mean, perpetual virgin. If you look at physicality or spirituality, how are you interpreting this? Virgin in mind, virgin in body. Isn't it mind over matter? Let's understand this. We're dealing on a high level of spirituality for those who can receive it. Remember, a sister had mentioned something a couple of vids ago, and she said that it seems like we don't do much that's orientated to the woman on a certain level. And I can understand that, though she might not be paying full attention. I do understand what she's saying right there. You know, because what are the reference material? What are the resources? What are the examples that we have in the world? Mm -hmm. When you look in the, the music industry, it's like even with Michelle Obama. What did she say? Um, the brother Sotomayor, he said, um, she, they asked if she wanted to be like anybody, if she would want to be anybody in the pop culture, whatever, like that world. And she said she wanted to be like Beyonce. Can you imagine that? I, I kind of lost a little bit for, you know, of, of honor for her. Cause I was just, a, I don't know, though. I mean, somebody who didn't get their GED until they were 30, talking about Beyonce. Now, some of y'all might not have got your GED either, but I'm going to come on now. You understand? I mean, I mean, I mean, come on, get it. Let's, the education is the key. You understand? Because the hand that rocks the cradle does what? Rules the world. Now, you may think it's a man's world. You understand? But it's, it's, really, it's really a gentleman's world. It's a Gentile men's world. It's not the true black man's world because the true black man has really yet to fully rise, to rise and to shine and to give John the glory. Here's where that fatherhood of God and that brotherhood of man. You see, we can't have no brotherhood amongst us as the brethren until we recognize and submit ourselves to the fatherhood of God. That's in spirit and in truth. No fakery, right? No bullying. You know, there's some of times ones and ones, the ones with longer locks want to bully the ones with shorter locks. Come on, get off that. I mean, that, that's just garbage there. You know, we're saying the, the scriptures teach us the standards and the keys. But for the sisterhood, this book here, the um, Gedla Adam, that we have available. You can go to the website if you want to order a copy, but you can look it up on the Internet and you will find it out there or the, um, the Ethiopic um, Book of Adam and Eve. The book, it's the Book of Adam and Eve, but the Ethiopic one. All right? So you can kind of search that out right there. Um, that's also very important. Because here's the key thing. The woman gets a lot of blame. You understand? The sisters get a lot of blame. And I, I've kind of, in ignorance, also kind of said this, like, yeah, it's because of the woman, you know, that, that we got kicked out the garden, you know. And then others interpret that on, on different levels, gnostically or agnostically. But if you look at the plain meaning, the peshat, what we call the peshat in Hebrew, the plain meaning, you understand, from, from what we have in the scripture, just to get the basic idea. Adam must have been somewhere around, wasn't he? He was somewhere because when she ate of it, she gave her husband. She gave Adam. Adam and said, hey, woman, stop what you're doing. I ain't going there because Jah told me before you was even out of my DNA, my rib, he told me that not to eat of this tree. 
And um, why you do that, I should have told you, but I'm not going to eat. But he just, he didn't even say Jack. Adam didn't say Jack. Adam, Adam, where art thou? Adam didn't say nothing. Now, if you look in the New Testament, where um, Hawaii Apollos, Paul, he says some very interesting things, right? And some uh, modern Christians have gotten these things confused. And since we're here speaking to the sisters, we want to give the item some due time because if we don't understand these things, then we're going to keep making these errors and we're going to keep wondering why if we're blessed and supposed to be blessed, we're having, you know, even trouble having strong families, you understand, productive families, loving families, you understand, um, and the, the family is so important, you understand, it's an Adam, remember First, first Corinthians says, as for as in Adam, the first father all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, you understand, and, and through Eve or through the, the Mary, Mary symbolic of the church, or the mother is that church, which is the community, and here in Timothy, it says, um, Timothy 1, and let's click on this right here, Timothy chapter 1, um, I mean, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Now, this is the verse that a lot of men jump on, and, and a lot of us would read that, especially at a very immature level, pre-bar mitzvah, you know, pre uh, well, the tis eyes, we would say, oh, look at that. For and Adam was not deceived. You see, you see, hear that woman? Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in transgression. Do you know what a deception is if you're deceived? That means that somebody did something to you. Somebody did something. Who knows who, who it is? Well, in this case, it's the serpent. Did something to, to Eve. Deceived her. Didn't tell her the truth. Conned her. Fooled her. Hoodwinked her. You know, if, if your daughter, brother, if your daughter was deceived, you understand, if they were deceived, right? If my daughter said to me, oh, I was deceived, you know what I mean? And, and, and therefore, that's why I transgressed. Would you be like, ha, 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 I'm happy with you. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, would you, or, or would you have sympathy? You'd be like, oh, wow, who deceived you? Now, if you say, well, she had a man, right? She had a man, but the man wasn't deceived. But they both were in the same incident, like Adam and Eve. This means Adam... Being a damn fool, you understand? He ate of that tree willingly. You, you wonder why our way is so hard, black man? Adam was black. The first man was black, not white. Yeah, we're right about that. But now let's, if we're going to, if we're going to recognize that, let's recognize the fullness of it. The fullness means that we were not deceived. Almost in a sense, we knew damn well what was going on. You understand? We knew that was wrong, and he's just there looking. I, I want to do my own little film, my movie, break out in some films and everything. You can film this scene right here when you interpret and understand it right. It's a couple of verses in the Bible, but even from those verses, it can still be a complete, you can almost do a complete film all, all, off of this if you really focus on the nuance that Adam is there. I don't know what's he looking around, or he's like, you know, just, just watching. I mean, what what's going on here? He... Yeah, Adam, Adam was not, you know, Adam was not, Adam was not deceived, but it was, but it was, it was Eve who was deceived, but Adam was right there. How come Adam didn't say, hey, baby love, watch what you're doing? Mm hmm Remember down here we have Sota, Sota, or Sata actually, Sota meaning the woman who was caught in unfaithfulness, you remember that part? If a man thinks or he got the spirit of jealousy, this is what he, he goes through. It's like a lie detector test, so to speak, an ancient lie detector test. And, yeah, it does work if you have the proper elements and the proper spirit of the one who is the priest. It does work on that sort of a level. It's basically the same thing as lie detector test. We'll hopefully get into that another time. This, that whole ritual there, what they call the Sota ritual, you understand, to find out whether your wife has been unfaithful or she wasn't unfaithful. But it's kind of woe to the man if you accuse her and doesn't, if you read the fullness of the um, legislation. You know, those who want to be under the law, see what the law says right there. But it says right here, to deviate from duty. And the immediate thing I notice is, is translated as decline, go aside, turn. It reminds me of sata. Even though the ta is, is a te, it's a tet, and not, and not tav. You know what I'm saying? It's not the soft T. 
It's not ta, it's it's ta. So it's what they sata. Sata means to deviate from duty, but there's a whole sota concerning the woman who is who 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 is um who is caught in unfaithfulness. Right? Now, notice right here, we say the woman was what? Being deceived was in transgression. But Adam was not. I can't tell you the number of times men and even myself included. Yes, I've, I, I got into that. You understand? On occasion, you know, I just confess, you know, tell the truth. You know, yeah, I remember, you know, speaking. Yeah, the man wasn't deceived. But then the spirit, when the spirit hit me, it was like I got knocked down. It was like... You know why it says that Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived? And then you read that, like, wait, Adam, she didn't call Adam. Adam was right there. You understand? That means he did it. He, he willingly disobeyed. Now when you go back to Genesis, right, Genesis chapter 3, and you're reading, and 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 um, the Lord asks him, like, where are you? And he says, yo, I, I, I was naked, and uh, I, I hid myself. And he says, who told you you was naked? Did you eat of the tree that I told you not to? You know, and what did he say? He said, the woman uh, who you gave me, she ate. And, you know, she, she, gave, she ate and she gave me. In other words, he blamed both Jah, he blamed God and the woman. And this is the crux of what's wrong with the black man. This is the crux of what's going on with us. I mean, if we look at what's going on with the woman being all pimped out now and prostitution and the whole, you know, worshiping the thigh. Or worshiping the ass, ass worship, you could call it that too. That's what it is. It's ancient. It's an ancient thing. This is what really, in a sense, as they blow your mind on level. When you start to really be able to properly interpret what was going on in the ancient time, and you see it's like we're going through a cycle, like we've returned to a psychological, a psychological fault, uh, the abnormality in the matrix. The matrix is the womb, the birth process, the crack baby generation, if you want to call it. You understand? And so we'll say, all these women having all these children, blah, 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 and so forth and so on from all these men. You know, and the men will jump up there and talk about, but yet he's a whoremonger too. You understand? But here's, here is where it wraps around now. Because it's notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Notice the key, the link right there. She shall be saved in childbearing. That's deep. So on a certain level, it's almost as though the woman... Even in Rastafari and the black woman and I and I woman have, in a sense, fulfilled or attempted to fulfill this even by measure of the childbirth. And those who haven't born as of yet, there's a blessing there too. You understand within the scripture. You over, but it says right here, if they continue in faith. Notice this they. It goes from she, right, to they. Both third person, but singular to plural. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety, or here the, 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 the more updated translation, but she will be delivered through childbearing. If she continues in faith and love, but it says if she, but really it's supposed to be if they. That's the key thing right there. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a man problem, a black man problem, and it's not just a black woman problem. It's an Adam and Eve problem. It's a black Adam and Eve problem. You know, and I thought this was very interesting that it says this right here at this particular point of, um, of the gospel right here. It says this right here. It's kind of interesting that it says that, you know, because there's a couple of other parts that it speaks on that. But this whole chapter is even more interesting, and we just kind of got into the real interesting part. Because if you go to this chapter on your own and we've taught on it, it speaks of the power of prayer. It talks about prayer. It says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, the first of everything, of our meetings, our gatherings, that supplication, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men. That means for all humanity, for our brothers and sisters of our nation and for all human beings for kings and for all that are in authority, for our president and for the president, the rulers, even the Gentiles, especially the Gentiles, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You see, we're not taking the high road on them. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. By doing this, 
we are counted to be in righteousness and goodness and acceptability in the sight of God, our Savior. When we don't do that, it's, I ain't praying for that. And then you wonder why your prayers aren't being answered otherwise, because you're a rebel. Who will have all men to be saved? You know, we kind of know that there'll be some that won't, that will reject the message of salvation. But we have to approach it from the approach of John, that all have an opportunity to be saved, to come to the what? The key word here, the knowledge, the gnosis, or the scientia, or the scientia, the science, the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ, the Jesus, or Jesus, the man, the Moshiach, Yeshua. There is one mediator. So forget all those lies you hear, like there's many ways to get to God and all that stuff. There's many ways to get to God, which are demons faking games in the last moments of the game. You know, faking jacks, in other words, being jokers, fooling disobedient people. You know what I'm saying? Giving them an easy way out. Think positive. You understand? You better think reality. You understand? You better rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in Ja and, and his son. You understand? And then, you know, it's all good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, to be testified in the appointed time, where to I am. Uh, I am ordained a preacher. I don't like to read unto, because un mean not to. So I read where to. I don't say unto. I say to. Where to I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christos, the Moshiach, and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Now notice, he clearly states, Paul here, that he is a teacher of the Gentiles. That's why we have the book of Hebrews which speaks to us in particular, especially Ethiopian Hebrews. But here Paul is saying where he is ordained for the Gentile church or Gentile Christianity in faith and verity. I will that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Another important thing that we notice in this particular document, let's see if we have the fit and the guest here. Here, here goes right here. Let's bring this up, the fit and the guest. There was a chapter that we was perusing on prayer. Not only is the fit and the guest law, it both deal with, with religious or spiritual matters within the church, as well as secular matter, as well as contracts and, 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 and business agreements. It teaches about business you know what I'm saying? And law and contracts, as well as the first part is teaching us about the faith. And one of the things, it speaks about like the seven or so um, main um, points to remember in prayer. And remind me, I want to touch on that particular chapter, but it's in the fifth and the guest on prayer. And one of them is lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, without wrath and doubting and without loose fire, burning up your brethren. Fire burn that, that brother. Fire burn him. You know, and then you want to chant praises to God. Come on, man. Come on. You're defiling the sanctuary. And it says, in like manner also that, that women ordain, or, or, adorn, adorn themselves. But it's a sort of, a sort of ordainment, how you dress. Themselves in modest apparel. And in, in, for us, in Ethiopian apparel and Ethiopian clothing. And there's something I want the sisters to work together on. I mean, the fashion. You understand? I mean, holy fashion. You understand? Know our Ethiopian um, clothing. You understand? Because part of our commonwealth. You understand? Ethiopian and home and abroad working together in this sort of a business enterprise. You understand? Because the Gentiles are trying to bootleg it bootleg Ethiopian clothing, a whole separate vid. But here it's saying that, it's speaking to the woman, that the woman, in like manner, adorn themselves in modest apparel. Well, it's talking about prayer, but still talking about the modest Ethiopian, our holy garments, with shamefacedness and sobriety. That means not looking like some of these video vixen and whores out there. Not with broided hair or gold or gold, or pearls, or costly array. 
You know what I'm saying? In, in other words, not looking like some of these tramps out there, basically. Now, this does not mean that our woman, you know what I'm saying, cannot beautify themselves. Don't, don't confuse it. It's trying to separate the church or those who say they're of the church from those who the worldly, the worldly fashion. So you have to be able to make a distinction. I mean, this can be a whole, a whole um, level of business for a lot of sisters when you think about it. You understand? I mean, they, they have magazines like Cosmopolitan. You can have a magazine like the Ethiopian. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that may be taken. Somebody might grab that. But we can consult together and, you know, work on where basically it's teaching our young daughters, sisters, mothers, and wives the true values. You understand? And, and, and be a business thing, about a business thing. That means the thing may be for, for sale, the magazine, or whatever like that. Remember, we want to employ our own people so they won't have to whore out there in Babylon. You know what I'm saying? So they won't have to whore for the system of things until the system of things is done. And when we get our act together, the system of things will be done. But not until then. Until then, it continues to drag on just like the dragon. Verse 10 says, but... In parentheses, it says, which becometh woman professing godliness. In other words, women who profess that they are reflecting the divine attributes with good works. And this is why this particular document right here, you understand, let us um, bring this back up right here. This particular document right here is so important. Um, the, the one that we're coming forward with, as well as this one right here, because this gives us this gives us the backstory. You understand the details of the backstory, and it's very very interesting what Adam and Eve went through after they were exiled from the garden. How they blamed each other, how they fought among themselves, how they were deceived. The devil still was playing games on them, just like the devil is doing in these baby mama drama and deadbeat baby father sagas out there. You understand? But it's saying that there's a certain order. And this is the sisterhood, a certain order. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Now, another way of interpreting that is a woman must learn quietly. This is, this is better. This is better. Not like some of the loud biatches out there. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's, that's really the old man. Yeah, we might have acted like that, sister. You might have been like that, brother. We might have acted like that in the old man. But we have to mortify, kill the old man. We have done the old man. You understand? That's, that's, the, first, that's the first one that has to get done is that old self, that old nature. And he is saying learn quietly with all submissiveness. Not submissiveness just to a physical male, but submissiveness to our father. You know, saying our loving Father, who includes both the sons and the daughters, and He pours upon the sons and the daughters in this age of Aquarius, the pouring out. He pours upon us His Holy Spirit upon the sons and daughters. Go to Joel. You understand? That's Old Testament, and it says sons and daughters. There's no distinction. You understand? Wouldn't you want to love your heavenly Father for such, Abba for such, even if your physical earthly father was was not a good father, even if, brother, if your mother was not, we have, we have Kedistin Gilmarian, and we have the true church, which is the spiritual body, you know what I'm saying, of the Christian fellowship, you know what I'm saying, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence, she must remain quiet, now, we got to understand something right here, you see, I, I see this going on right now even in Rastafari. A lot of the women are stepping up. The sons are kind of like walking on the side or, you know, not really stepping up to this call and everything. And um, it's like the women are not usurping authority from their intent. They're, they're, they're helping out in desperate times. They're doing their bit. They're doing their part. But why John says this through the apostle is that man has a certain responsibility, especially the black man. We have a certain particular responsibility because we allowed our rulership to be taken by Satan, by the devil. You understand? And now allow a kind of man, a mankind, to usurp it over us. You understand? And we can see, you know, we know why. We've turned our backs on that which was ours and, and got hoodwinked and bamboozled. We really have to check that out. So that's what this is, this is speaking about. 
You understand? Know it's in that the men have a, res a divine responsibility in order to restore the cosmos, the galaxy to, to stability again, to restore the balance, the ma'at, to step up. That's what it's saying right here, to step up. You understand? Know Stop trying to say, yeah, the woman, you are empress, and I'll just be a Ross. I'll be a duke, in a sense, and you'll be an empress, not even a king. Why don't you say emperor? Isn't that an equal relate? What's the inequality about? You, you, see, you see how you've been hoodwinked and bamboozled almost again, daughters. You understand? Know it's all this emperor stuff. So before you've been allowed time to grow, boom. You understand? Know you just come and you and I are empress. So where's my government? Where's my kingdom? Where's my... You, you know what I mean? What kind of game is this? You understand? So let's understand why it's saying what it's saying here. All right, then it dovetails with where we left off or where we had um, started off, actually. For Adam was first formed. He was first reformed. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the, if you look at the early Rastafari, it was almost like more sons, more men than women. And then gradually the woman started to come forward into, into Rastafari. Like there was an old saying that some of the brethren had, had, had told me years ago, um, the daughters take longer to come than the sons. No pun intended, you understand, but you always what I mean, to come to that knowledge or to come to that f fulfillment, that, that, that recognition. Because women are more spiritual on one level, but, but sometimes the sons are not able to teach or transmit that spirituality or the teaching of that in its proper orientation because we're manipulating the Bible like the Gentiles in a sense. We haven't purified the oil and the apothecary. You understand? And that oil, we have to purify the oil because when you burn the, the lamps, if that oil is not pure, the light is not going to burn right. It's going to have an offish color. You understand? And, and that right there can also allow certain demonic energy to come in because you're not using pure oil using impure oil, you understand, using a lower grade. John told you specifically, you understand, what to do. He told us specifically, and not just because he just liked giving a bunch of rules, but he understands the spiritual, the spiritual dimension that we're in. You understand, and we're just learning that there are UFOs and there are Ethiopians from other planets, <laughs> for real. I know it sounds wild, you understand, but you think what the Ethiopians said about Lala Bella was just an exaggeration? Ancient Ethiopians, holy Ethiopians, are not likely to exaggerate. Maybe embellish a story, but to exaggerate is two different things, two different words. The demoniacs exaggerate. You know, like they whitewash Jesus. They keep long hair, so a beard and everything, but they, 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 they make him white, and, and then they add blue eyes to it. You understand? That is not an embellishment. You understand? The embellishment, you understand, the, the, an embellishment is different. Embellishment is to beautify it, not to deceive or falsify it. You, let's just understand that right there. So this is for the sisters and the sisterhood. Um, now, I would advise this for the sisters and the brothers, the families, really. If couples can, can fellowship and pray together, in fact, the fifth and the guest says that couples are to pray together. You know what I'm saying? And give some very, very interesting rules, um, um, guidance, memoria, you know what I'm saying? Um, 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 guidance, you know, guidance and detection on that particular note. But we have to restore the family, you know, foundation. And, and the sisterhood, the true sisterhood, must be based on our lady, Kadistan Gudamariam, because that goes to the very root of it. That connects the Queen of Sheba. You understand? That purifies everything straight, straight to, that's linked to, to Sarah. You understand? Being a daughter of Sarah within the, within the Christ man profession of it. You understand? I mean, um, and there's so much to that, and I don't want to go into it, like, like, I think it's better and more appropriate for for I and I to give certain counsel to those elect sisters and those who uh, that will take up the responsibility um, to to learn these things for themselves and to for the sisters to discuss these things. You understand? For them to see what's in John's word. The member says to learn quietly. That means um, learn apart on a level from we sons to learn in your own. Um, sorority or to learn within your own sisterhood. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, the sisters do have a tendency to talk. 
our sisters do have a tent, like the view. That's why they got these shows on TV where women like to come together and reason. It's just the content of the reasoning must be on a higher and a holier level. You know what I'm saying? And we'll become more acquainted with, with our story. You know what I'm saying? And how we fell and how through, through the divine plan of the King of Kings and his Christ we were restored. You know what I'm saying? That really goes a long way to bringing us to that new day and into that new day. So there's more that we would like to say on sisterhood, but we want to put a word out there for the Rastafari, the mothers, daughters, and wives concerning um, the sisterhood, some of the upcoming publications, and to remind ones about the Gedla Ada. It's so very interesting. I mean, on, on some level, I mean, if you really get to read the story and see what Adam and Eve were going through and how they were all hard-hearted against blaming each other and everything like that, it makes you, if you've experienced some of these baby mama dramas and, and chaos or see what's, what, 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 how we're being destroyed in this, in, this, um, in this Egypt of the underworld, in the duat, you know what I'm saying, in the tuat here, you know, in hell, you know, how we're being destroyed in this Babylon. And then you begin to understand that this is not the first time this happened to us. And we can learn a lot once we have that wisdom. You see, because we don't have it, we find out these things the hard way. You know what I'm saying? We find out these things the hard way. And every time we got to learn a lesson, again, the higher the price, we got to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? And, and the higher the price gets, the more dearer, the dearer the course gets. You know what I'm saying? And, and we can't afford to have this continue and go on. So, sisters, my sisters of Rastafari faith and our, my mothers of Rastafari faith, this one is for the eye and the new uh, volume that, that we're publicating from an older work that was translated by Out of Print. Um, and it goes on to Queen of Sheba and only Son Minulik as well. It's another good text. But if I were to put it in order, you understand, in, in, in order, I would probably have to say the Queen of Sheba and only Son Minulik, which we also have available. Check us out, www.lojsociety.org, the, the um, books, forward slash books. Um, I would say that would be first. But this one that we're publishing now, The Legend of Our our Lady Mary, or Kadistin Gulmariam, and her mother Hannah, it's, 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 it's very special, it's very holy, and I think it, 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 is, it is valuable, it's, in, it's in, beyond any price, really, whatever cost, you know, needs to be to get a lot of these in circulation, you know, we're saying, um, it's just the cost, I mean, it, w it would really touch your heart. It'll make us, even the brothers, better fathers. It'll make the mothers uh, better mothers. It'll make the children better children when they really overstand the half of the story because uh, it in the martyr, it repairs the systemic anomaly caused by the deception of Eve and also the disobedience of Adam is corrected by um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, we stand to the glory of our Father, Abba Kadu. So we see how the whole picture comes together, and we have those divine examples. It's very important to get those divine examples because they help us with the vision of the spiritual things. And without that vision, the people perish, you know, and that's the state that we're in right now because my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So more to come, my brothers and sisters. Um, shalom Rastafari, you know what I'm saying, start praying, start doing your studies, you know what I'm saying, start praying to even fellowship with other brothers and sisters because they're out there, you know what I'm saying, they're out there and may the Holy Spirit guide us and, and, and bring us together, you know what I'm saying, so we can say next time on Holy Mount Sion, Shalom Rastafari.